Okay, for this sketching on location, we are in my backyard. So we actually, um, from time to time, try to take family bike rides in the evenings where we go down to the park and watch the sunset over the river, which is one of my favorite things. And it's kind of a running joke in my family because I'm like, I want to go watch the sunset. Most of the time they want to go with me. So it actually works out pretty well. Usually they end up running around with their dad or throwing a football or something. And then I can sit down and just kind of draw for a little bit. So you can see here my my I'm I'm fast and loose with composition so I'm really big on it, I want you to draw what you see and that I want you to convey the essence of where you are and that time and that space and that moment but it's okay too if you end up changing a few things perspective wise just because maybe that's what you see or that's an element that's standing out to you so I kind of moved the tree a little into the forefront and cropped the bridge a little bit I kind of imagined I was a little bit closer in than I actually was in reality so the picture that you see on the screen is actually taken from my vantage point where I was sitting where I was sketching the other thing that's really hard with this particular sketch is I took this um, the picture after I finished the sketch so during the course of the illustration that I'm doing the sun was setting so that's one thing that's really hard when you're doing any kind of sketching or plein air painting during sunrise or sunset is that the light quality is changing moment to moment to moment so for a sketch I kind of like to just wherever I'm starting at that's where I'm like okay that's what I'm going to capture so even though the light's going to be changing somewhat this is what I want to get and so when I sat down initially the sky just looked yellow the whole sky looked yellow and so that's kind of what I went with for this sketch is because I wanted to convey what I was seeing in that moment that we were out there so I did that really quick really loose pencil sketch and then without even doing any erasing or anything I just jump in immediately with my permanent ink pen and I'm just going over what I drew um, I'm kind of using my pencil lines as a guide point and I'm adding a little more detail with the ink I just like to use the pencil lines in case you know especially with the bridge is a great example of something that I'm just hesitant to draw it immediately with ink because I mean I can easily get my per perspective off with that um, so I'm just coming in going over it still trying to keep a loose sketchy line um, and just trying to come in and translate the basic details before I add the watercolor wash um, just really really light with my just sharpie pencil pen I really really love my sharpie water uh, permanent ink uh, pen to have in my watercolor set it's awesome it, they're ubiquitous you can pick them up anywhere if you were ever traveling and you lost one um, you're not gonna be heartbroken about it because they're not wildly expensive I just I really love them so yeah, I'm just coming in over the pencil lines and just kind of drawing in the very basic details of what I'm looking at and what I'm seeing. And I'm trying to capture that um, and trying to capture the mov movement and the energy that I was feeling that particular evening. I talk about a lot that these sketchbooks are really for me a form of preserving my memories and the moments, you know, of doing this sketch and our lovely little bike ride that we took and hearing my family run around and play and giggle and I'm talking to them the whole time I'm doing this and it's just a moment that I want to remember so that's what's so beautiful about doing art in this way is that you can create these little moments and memories that you sort of have forever so for this particular one like I said the sky was really yellow so actually I just put some pure water not even from my brush straight into the yellow paint because as you can see my brush is super dirty because I'm really bad about not cleaning it out and I wanted to make sure that my sky was very yellow and crisp I didn't want it to have it messed up and muted with a lot of different colors and this wouldn't be as much of an issue if you were in you know a house somewhere or something and you had access to a water container um, but it is more of an issue when you're doing field sketching but I still think it's kind of a good policy when you're building out your watercolor sketches is to start um, layering in <laughs> did you see I just got black paint on my sky because I had a dirty paper towel but it's fine I was able to wash it off um, as you're laying in your colors, still think about how you lay in your colors but especially when you're in the field I'm really particular especially if I'm using lots of yellows for example because those colors are super easy to get muddy and I really wanted this to be like almost a completely yellow sky because when we arrived that was what we were seeing so I just laid in my sky I definitely use a paper towel to help blot it in and now I'm going to move down to my grass um, we've talked about watercolor follows the water so I can't paint my water or my bridge right now because my sky is super wet especially with yellow the blue will bleed into the yellow and it'll make a green sky which is definitely not what we're going for so I'm just trying to start laying in the green I'm laying in lighter colors and I'm building up my layers watercolor is a layer game so I like to start soft and light and then I gradually build darker and darker and darker until the last thing that I do is add in my blacks 
So this is just my first light pass that I put in and I'm just starting to kind of build up all the things that I see around me. So I'm moving into adding in the water now because the yellows had a little time to dry. Um, I really love painting the Tennessee River. It's always a different color. I, f I swear it changes color all the time. I feel like if you aren't painting it, you might not notice, but it sometimes it looks really green and sometimes it looks really blue and sometimes it looks muddy and sometimes it looks black like ink. Um, anyway, so I'm laying in the colors, trying to get closer to what I'm seeing in person. And it's hard to translate that into a, into a picture too, but... Um, and then working on the tree, I really decided to make the crepe myrtle tree kind of the focus point, um, because I love those. There's a lot of really beautiful trees in the park and they're kind of in their last hurrah of late summer glory at this point. So I am just adding in the colors start now that the sky's nice and dry. I'm adding in the bridge. You know, I always, the fine lines, people get a little freaked out about trying to do a fine line if you're not used to doing them. Um, the real trick is just to barely touch your paper, just barely touch your paper and make sure that you have plenty of water on your paintbrush. This bridge is a great example of, in this instance, I have done architectural sketches of the bridges that have been like super detailed and I get all the angles right and I have all the perfect, the correct number of whatever you call the cross support beams, all that stuff. That is not what this sketch is. This is a quick, loose, on the fly sketch. There are no rulers involved in this. Like this is just on the fly and our brain is amazing the way that it reads things even if it's not correctly there so if you really take a second if you are familiar with a bridge in Chattanooga or if you even look at the picture you can obviously tell that I did not get all of the details in there and that I'm not 100% correct on my angles and it's not right but when you glance at this painting your first impression if you are familiar with my city at all you know immediately that you're looking at the Chattanooga walking bridge so that's what you need to focus on when you're doing these sketches it's not about getting total complete 100 percent accurate realism for these watercolor illustrations that we're doing it's creating a piece of art in a moment on the fly and your goal is to create something that registers in the brain oh yeah that's the chattanooga walking bridge i did want to show you guys this so i don't tape down my paintings um obviously these are in a sketchbook so that doesn't work at all but i also just don't tape them down to my studio because i'm used to working like that but sometimes you do have paper buckles or curls or winds and this is how i fix it is i just hold my finger down. It doesn't make for very good video content, but it was kind of windy that day and I was having some curling on the edges because I had done the watercolor wash in the sky, which is a little bit heavy application. So I'm just holding it down with my finger to make sure the sketchbook stays in place. So a low tech problem. Another solution that I see a lot of watercolors do that work in sketchbooks is they take one of those bulldog binder clips and actually close the side of their sketchbook with it while they're painting. I don't like that for two reasons. One, yeah, it always, to me, it nips a little bit of the paper and it creates a weird little edge that I have to fill in later. If that makes sense, like it kind of acts as a weird, weird resist. So I don't like that. Two, I'm all about minimalism when it comes to the supplies that I am carrying. Tonight, in this particular sketch, I rode my electric bike. Guys, we live in a very hilly neighborhood. Don't judge me. I love my electric bike. Um, rode my electric bike down there. I had my saddle. I had plenty of space. But a lot of times I'm backpacking or hiking or, you know, just even in my pocketbook if I'm out in the town walking around, I don't want to have a lot of stuff. And those bulldog clips or binder clips just take up too much space for me. But that is another solution if you don't want to have to awkwardly hold your hand on your paper. So right now I'm adding the shadows. The shadows are my favorite part. I always tell students, when in doubt, add shadows. So you need to add shadows to everything. It makes the painting come to life. There are always shadows. The last thing you should be doing is mixing up a loose gray and adding the shadows. Sometimes they're super pronounced like this tree. Sometimes they're just like low key little lines that I'm adding on the bridge, but it brings the piece to life. So you should always be adding some kind of shadows to your painting in some capacity. There's always lights and darks. And I've noticed, especially with this particular type of sketching, what happens is that people tend to treat it like a coloring book page and it's very flat. So they paint everything just one level, one value of blue, one value of yellow for the sky, one value of green, and they're not having a lot of depth. You need to have your highs and your lows on a value scale. If you know what I'm talking about, a lot of times you use a one through 10 scale, one being white, 10 being black, and then anywhere on that scale is your values. But the same translates for green, any, any color. So you have a value scale. So you wanna make sure that you're having lows, highs, 
and mids so that you're having light colors, dark colors, and midtones. And then the really, I feel like what I see is if I do get students kind of getting the light, we're hesitant to add in the dark tones, the dark shadows. And I think in watercolor, we're a little bit afraid. You can't take it back if it looks stupid, but I promise you the dark and the shadows really, really make a painting pop. And if you really look at any kind of landscape or anything that you're looking at, you will see those colors everywhere. So a lot of times for the sunset, I paint very different than this. I usually like bleed in all my colors and get my whole sky set. But I knew that I wanted the sky to reflect the yellow and there was a little traces of pink, but you know, mixing yellow and pink together don't make a really pretty color. So I painted everything yellow. And then the very last thing that I did was come in and add the pink highlight. So it's a little bit different technique than I normally do with my sky, but just kind of as you get a feel for color theory and how colors mix together, I knew that I didn't want to really mix the yellow and pink. So I wanted to make sure that my yellow was really dry before I came in and added just a few little pockets of pink to capture the sunset, which I wish I had got a picture of the sunset when it was vibrant and colorful but I didn't. Yeah, the sky was yellow, the whole part glowed yellow. So I blotted off my paper, I gave it a few seconds to make sure it was nice and dry, and then the very last thing that I like to do is come in with my ink and kind of define and fine tune all of my line work and make sure that it's really, really pops, clean up anything that I think might need to be cleaned up, add more definition and detail. I feel like this really, really helps a lot on architectural stuff on the bridges that you can see off in the background and adding in those shadows still, like the heavy shadows on the water, heavy shadows with a tree, the grass, all the little details. Um, this is also a super fun part of the process. It's probably my favorite. It's a lot of scribbling, which I think is just a cathartic experience to just scribble the paper with wild abandon. So I always encourage people, this is the point in the sketch process where you have to turn off your brain because your brain is going to be like, oh my God, I'm not going over this with ink. But I think it really like makes it pop. You don't have to do it, but it's up to you. But I do always come back over with my ink. And there is my finished sketch. If you guys have any questions or want more information, reach out to me on social media or at my website.